the IIT family in India has been acknowledged nationally and internationally as leading technological institutes of the highest standards. IIT Madras, a temple of excellence, is the third member of this prestigious family which has been contributing human resources of the highest caliber that has played a major role in nation building. IIT Madras has a very interesting history behind it. Seven hundred BC, the University of Takshashila in India, acknowledged to be the world's first university, had students from all over the world studying more than sixty subjects, including sciences, technology, and humanities. India's educational systems and processes continued strongly over the centuries. The advent of British rule marked a change in the concept and delivery of education in our country. 15th August 1947, India won independence. And soon, the temples of modern India were established in cooperation with countries like USSR, USA, UK and Germany. In 1946, even before independence, the seeds for these temples were sown in the minds of our great leaders, some of whom were languishing in the prison cells at Hijli in Bengal. The committee headed by Sri Nalini Ranjan Sarkar recommended the establishment of institutions of higher technical education in India, in the North, South, East and West. In 1956, Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru visited the Federal Republic of Germany. Chancellor Konrad Adenauer and President Theodor Hess offered to set up a technical institution in India and Prime Minister Nehru accepted the offer. In October 1956, Professor August Truker's technical mission visited India for the discussions and formulation of a final proposal for the establishment of the institute. Sri Kamaraj, the then Chief Minister of the Government of Madras, provided 633 acres of beautiful wooded land adjacent to the Raj Bhavan, a part of the Gindi forest, for the institute and the idea of IIT Madras was physically realized. 7th August 1958 the first Indo-German agreement for the establishment of IIT Madras was signed in Bonn. The total cost of the project was Rs 8.9 crores. Of this, Rs 1.8 crores worth of equipment was given as German aid and the remaining finance was provided by the Government of India. In addition to the financial aid, the German government agreed to depute to IIT Madras 20 professors and 5 foremen for 5 years and additionally 20 Indian teachers would receive training in Germany for 2 years. The planning committee headed by Dr. A. Lakshmanaswamy Mudaliar drafted the complete plans for the institute. 31st July 1959, Professor Humayun Kabir, the then Union Minister for Scientific Research and Cultural Affairs inaugurated the institute. The inaugural stone is presently located in front of the CLT lobby in the Humanities and Sciences block. Dr. A. Lakshmanaswamy Mudaliar was nominated as the first chairman of the Board of Governors of the Institute. 17th August 1959, Professor B. Sengupto took charge as the first director and Sri R. Natarajan IAS was appointed as the first registrar. Classes for the first batch of 120 students commenced in the campuses of AC College of Technology and the Highways Research Station in Gindi. The first batch of eight professors and four technical experts from Germany arrived at the institute, marking the beginning of one of the most successful Indo-German cooperative ventures. 17th November 1960 Dr. Theodore Hess, 
the former president of the Federal Republic of Germany, visited IIT Madras and interacted with the faculty members of IIT Madras in the CLRI campus. Professor B. Sengupto explained the IIT Madras project to the president. The plan for the IIT Madras campus was drafted by the School of Country and Town Planning in Delhi. In August 1960, the first hostels in the campus, Krishna and Kaveri, were completed. In 1961, the Building Sciences block was completed and the offices of the director, administration and the library started functioning here. The classes also started functioning here. The central workshop, a strong point of the Indo-German venture, also started functioning at the same time. In 1961, all the IITs were declared as institutes of national importance by an act of the Parliament of India. 3rd December 1962, Dr. Henrich Lübke, the then President of the Federal Republic of Germany, unveiled a tablet bearing the words symbolizing the Indo-German cooperation. This was the first function to be held in the open-air theatre. Subsequently, the Humanities and Sciences block, the Electrical Sciences block and the Mechanical Sciences block were completed by 1964. 24th September 1963, a general-purpose analog computer was gifted by the United States of America. This was the starting point for the computer center in IIT Madras. 11th July 1964, the first convocation of IIT Madras was held in the open air theater. Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, the then president of India, delivered the convocation address. 92 BTEC degrees and 15 MSc degrees were awarded. 28th December 1964. The first sports event to be held at the stadium of IIT Madras was the third inter-IIT sports meet. Mansoor Ali Khan, Nawab of Pataudi, the then captain of the Indian cricket team, declared open the stadium. By the end of 1964, eight hostels, one officer's hostel and a guest house were ready in addition to the staff presidential quarters. In 1966, in a thought-provoking convocation address, Nobel laureate Sir C. V. Raman said that India should not look to import essential items but must build manufacturing capability within the country. 7th June 1966, the second Indo-German agreement was signed in Delhi. In 1967, the Central Library Building was inaugurated by Dr. A. Lakshmanaswamy Mudaliyar. The first decade of 1959 to 1969 saw the infrastructural development and academic foundation. By the end of the first decade, it was time to bid farewell to the great achievers who had made the dream of IIT Madras a reality in such a short span of time. In December 1967, Professor A. Ramachandran took charge as the new director from Professor Sengupto. In recognition of his extraordinary services as the first director of IIT Madras, a portrait of Professor Sengupto was unveiled and it is now placed at the entrance of the Heritage Centre. It was also time to bid farewell to the Chairman of the Board of Governors, Dr. A. Lakshmanaswamy Mudaliyar. A bust sculpture of this visionary educationist was unveiled by the then President of India, Sri V. V. Giri. It is now placed at the entrance of the Heritage Centre. In 1968, the famous landmark of our IIT Madras, the Gajendra Circle and the Administrative Block were completed. 17th November 1973, the IBM 370 bar 175 computer facility was inaugurated by Sri C. Subramanian, the then Minister of Education. In 1973, 
the industrial consultancy center started functioning from the building sciences block the years 1968 to 1975 was a period of consolidation expansion addition of new centers and facilities and a focus on research culture almost about 50 years down this memory lane what started as a vision in the minds of our great leaders in the prisons of Hijli is now a reality. Continuing to serve the cause of academic excellence in India and globally. This great institution's history is studded with exceptional achievements and some may make for legends. The saga of IIT Madras will continue to be etched in the minds and hearts of all those who value excellence. The IITs are a visible testimony and reflection of the glorious evolution of education in India, a long and exemplary journey through and for excellence that began in Takshashila.